You don't have any gray hair like what I have. <laughs> And you speaking, you speaking wisdom of guys that's been in the business for like 20 and 30 years now. Hi, this is Ted Kelly with another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Hey, today we've got an awesome guest on. His name is Reese Holman. He is the regional director of operations for the largest hotel management company in the world, Ambridge Hospitality. Hey, Reese, how are you? I'm fine, Ted. How are you? Man, I am doing well, man. We appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your busy day to talk with us a little bit about all the things going on in Ambridge and in your in your neck of the woods. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. All right. So, hey, usually before I dive into my series of questions about all the great things that you guys are doing, I always like to give our audience a little bit of background on our guests. Tell us a little bit about you. You know, where you grew up, where you're from, all of that good stuff, and, and kind of start us in the trek of how you got into hospitality. All right. So I am from Huntsville, Alabama, uh, Rocket City, known for uh, the Space Center and Redstone Arsenal. Grew up there, educated there in the Huntsville City Schools uh, system. Went on to go to college in uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama at the University of Alabama Roll Tide. Uh, went back to Huntsville temporarily. And, um, you know, over the course of life, uh, picked up hotel jobs here and there, just, you know, just to fly by night, fill in, little cash flow. Uh, but I moved to South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, particularly uh, a few years ago. And I decided, I think I want to get back in the industry and take this very seriously. And I started working at uh, Club Wyndham Ocean Boulevard uh, as a front desk agent. Um, and from there, you know, just was on the fast track to uh, to success and to growth. Uh, had some awesome teachers and tutors along the way. And here I am now about, I think it's been, God, I've been gone from Wyndham, I think six years now. Um, and now I am, you know, from in six years, I've gone from a front desk agent to being a regional director of operations uh, with, as you said, the world's largest third party hospitality management firm. Wow. Wow, that is that is awesome, man. So, so tell me this. So you've got an area, I think, in the Indianapolis area, right? Absolutely. I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay. How many hotels are you supporting as a regional director of operations? I support six hotels. Four of them are here in the city, and then there are two that are uh, out in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Wow. Okay. So, so walk us through... What's a day in the life for Reese Holman? Uh, it's um, very busy, uh, very <laughs> busy. Um, I will say that my passion is training. My passion is growth and development. Those are my strong suits. Those are uh, things that I champion. And so each and every day, I strive to leave an impact on my managers and their staff. And so I'm always available for coaching, for training, for development, uh, but for the most part, because I have six properties and I typically work five days a week, uh, like to work five days a week, um, I visit one property a day. And so on those visits, I sit with the GM. We do property inspections. We walk through capital uh, items to see if there's any significant need for the hotel. We look at the finances. We look at the budgets. Uh, we look at forecasting. Uh, we look at inventory, cost control, labor, um, the whole nine, everything that the GM should be looking at, I partner with them to set eyes on it, to give instruction and feedback, uh, and then to help coach and develop and get them to a level where they are comfortable uh, looking at those items and taking care of those um, issues that may arise on a day-to-day -day operations. Uh, my Fort Wayne properties, I actually split my day there uh, because there are only two properties there. So when I visit there, I'll do half a day at that property and then half a day at another property. Um, but, but you know, that's, that's it. You know, a lot of leadership, coaching, development, training, uh, second set of eyes, making sure that our properties uh, exceed the guest expectation, making sure that our performance from a guest service standpoint is where it needs to be, and then making sure that I'm there to physically support my managers um, in whatever needs that they have, be it you know additional training, additional understanding about something, or if it's a, a major issue that they just need guidance on. Right. So I would 
I would take it then a big part of your job is setting the culture and trying to and trying to develop your people. Here's a question. Let me step back a little bit. How do you go about finding great potential GMs? The one thing I, I always say about um, leadership in the hospitality industry, uh, and that's from all levels, from the GM all the way down to the bellman, um, you can't teach uh, hospitality. I can teach you how to check someone in. I can teach you how to make a bed. I can teach you how to follow the SOPs. But you cannot teach genuine care and concern and hospitality. Uh, so one thing that I like to do in the interview process, um, and I actually picked this up when I lived in Myrtle Beach, is that I go on property walks during the interview process because I want to see how are you going to respond to the guests that are in the hallways. I want to see how you're going to respond if we walk up across a piece of paper in the parking lot or in the hallway floor. And then I want to see what your feedback is as it relates to the cleanliness and condition of the building once we return back to the office setting. If you are a person that is attentive, uh, recently I just hired a general manager. And when we got back from the um, property walk, I was uh, I, I, it, it took me back because she pointed out all of these very minor things that I knew existed and I did not think she was going to see. And she's like, yeah, on the third floor, I saw this and we, you know, I want to tackle this and I want to tackle this. And so those are the things I look for. But then I want to make sure I want to know that you're going to speak to the guests. I want to know that you're going to kiss the babies. I want to know that you're not going to walk past trash and text someone or call someone on the radio and say, hey, I need you to go pick up some trash in the parking lot. No, you're right there. You see it. Let's pick it up. Um, I grew up in a, in a Christian home. And so, you know, one one scripture that I kind of keep in the forefront is let he that is greatest among you serve. And so oftentimes we look at leadership from the perspective of I'm the big boss, I'm the, I'm the head person in charge. Uh, but that simply means, you know, the bigger my title is, the more I should be serving. And so uh, servant leadership is a style that I like to exemplify. It's something that I look for um, because after all, it's the people that follow us. It's the people that we lead that makes us leaders. And so in that, we have to make sure that we are serving them in whatever capacity uh, that is equitable uh, uh, and that is ethical uh, and making sure that their day-to-day -day operations goals as planned. Man, that is awesome. I like that answer. Hey, give me a second. I need to give a shout out to my sponsor. Otherwise, they won't sponsor us, right? So let me take yes. a second and give them a <laughs> shout out and then we'll come back. Hey, yes, THM, sir. THM viewers, this episode is being sponsored by Recovery. If you've ever experienced a home fire, a tornado, or a natural disaster, you know how easy it is to lose everything overnight. Well, the Recovery app is a new app that allows you to record everything in your home, store it in the clouds for easy retrieval should disaster strike versus you trying to recall all of your valuables, your household jewelry, things of that nature. And it allows you to settle your claims with your insurance agency much, much, much faster. Check out the Recovery app. The promo code on screen gives you 50% off your first year. So please check it out and use it. And tell them you saw it on the THM. And as always, we like to have you follow us on LinkedIn, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And this podcast with Reese will be sponsored, will also be on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So you can check it out with all the other THM episodes. And we always like all of your feedback, thoughts, comments, questions. So, hey, Reese. So now, I love that answer. I think that's great. Tell me something. What's the biggest challenge that you have in your job? The biggest challenge that I have in my job, that's always a challenge to answer. Um, <laughs> No two days are the same, and every day is a challenge. And I think every day we're met with new opportunities to make ourselves better. Um, if, if there is one challenge, I would say it's going to be managing personalities, understanding that, um, you know, especially in a regional role, having multiple properties that you support, no two properties are the same, no two managers are the same. And there are significant personality differences at times, and understanding how to properly communicate with them um, the way that they need to. Eileen Swayson from the Meeting Institute in uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, a great leadership development uh, teacher. 
uh, she used to always say, you have to teach people how to treat you. And so in, in, in being taught how to treat them, I'm open to learn how can I best manage you? What is it that you require from me? You know, I have some managers that require a conversation with me every day. They don't necessarily need anything, but they need five, 10 minutes to hear my voice and just to kind of, you know, uh, uh, you know, go back and forth with for a few moments just to, just to establish that continued relationship. I have some managers that don't want to hear from me at all. Not that they hate me, not that there's an issue. It's just like, hey, I know my job. I know what I'm supposed to do. Give me the space to do what I need to do. And then there's some that you have to kind of hold their hand and say, okay, come on now. You know, I know you failed, but let's get back up. We're going to walk this thing out together. And so being able to juggle those multiple personalities, those multiple uh, needs uh, from the perspective of those leaders that I support and understanding how to best serve them and, and knowing that, you know, the hat that I wear to this property, I'm going to have to change it when I get to the next property. And, and, you know, that's, that's sometimes a challenge because I move very quickly. I'm a, I'm very, you know, let, let's hit the bullet points and let's get it done. I'm about, I'm about efficiency and effectiveness and so I don't want to labor all day. Let's get this done. If we can get it done in 15 minutes, let's get it done in 15 minutes. And we've got seven hours and 45 minutes left that we can just do whatever we want to do. Um, and so because I'm moving so fast, I have to kind of slow down sometimes and say, wait a minute, I'm not in Kansas anymore. I'm over here with this particular person and I need to change my style up. I need to slow down my pace um, and just and adapt to what's around me and uh, adapt to the needs of those particular managers as I'm serving them. Yeah, and that is so interesting because just like you describe in the, uh, the employee side of it, you have to do the same thing kind of on the guest side, right? Yeah. Like every guest is a little bit different. Every guest has got a little bit different requirement on how they view things. So you're, you're, uh, you're, speaking, uh, you're speaking some good stuff there, man. I, I, yes, I sir. applaud you on that. So. You talked about your biggest challenge. You talked about, you know, kind of how you got into it. Now, what's been your most rewarding uh, episode so far in your hospitality career? I think the episode is continual. It's a sequel that continually comes and continues to play. And I'll tell you how it started and, and what was instilled in me. Uh, it was the winter of 2018. Um Working in resorts is so different than working in hotels. Resorts are very seasonal. Uh, your season starts at Memorial Day and ends at Labor Day. And when you get into the shoulder season of Christmas and Thanksgiving, it's completely dead. And so we would go to work. We wouldn't have any work. There would be no check-ins. We'd just sit around and just, you know, order DoorDash and, and have fun and just play around and stuff. I had this manager who actually is a great friend of mine to this day, Dion Hemingway. Uh, she was my assistant guest services manager at the time. And Dion pulled me to the side one day and she looked at me. She said, let me tell you something. You're not like everybody else. While everybody else is playing around, I want you to get into Destination U, which was Wyndham's training system at the time. She said, I want you to get into Destination U. And any course that looks um, interesting, anything that appeals to you, I want you to take it. And I want you to invest in yourself. Use this slow season to cultivate yourself and to develop acumen as it relates to this business. Because I think you're going to go far, but you've got to invest in yourself. By the end of that winter, maybe two, three months, I had taken 66 courses in Destination U. Uh, I had became exposed to uh, AHLEI through American Hotel and Logic Association. I had gotten then a guest services professional certificate and... Um, a certified hotel uh, department trainer, I think is the second certification I had got. And, you know, I did all of that just because of that conversation with her that you need to invest in yourself. And so the most rewarding thing that I've had happen is that I continue to not only invest in myself, but I continue to give back and have those same conversations that she had with me back in the winter of 2018 you're not like everybody else. You've got a bright future ahead of yourself. I think we have a responsibility as hospitalians and hoteliers uh, to incite or ignite a fire in that next generation of hotel leaders and let them know that there are options available for you, that there is a very rewarding industry out there. You know, if you love people 
and you love culture and you love to travel and you love to, you know, see new places and do new things, this is definitely the industry for you. You've got to invest in yourself. And from there, I've been able to invest in others. I have a friend who works in uh, timeshare sales right now. I hired him as a front desk associate, uh, I think 2020, 2021. When he left me, it broke my heart, but he went on to become the top salesman on the East Coast uh, for the organization that he was selling for. And he continues to go places. Last year was so fulfilling. He sent me pictures from Greece and he said, I would never be here if you had never taken a chance on me. If you had never poured into me and encouraged me to take this job serious. And because I listened to you, it has taken me all the way to Greece, a place I've never been and never thought I'd be. And so that's rewarding. When I get those, uh, that feedback, I get those conversations from people that I've managed. Um, am I hard, am I easy to work with? No, nope. I'm not, you know, I smile, but I am very matter of fact. I'm very no BS. I have zero tolerance for foolishness. You know, I, I'm a firm believer. We got to earn our keeps. We got to be key contributors every single day that we show up. We're not here to play around. We're here to contribute and make significant contributions to the business uh, for the sake of not only the guests, but the owners that we work on behalf of. And in doing that, um, you know, it becomes uncomfortable for a lot of people. And so if you can work with me and work under me, then, hey, you've, 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 you've passed the test. Uh, but, but the rewarding, the rewarding thing in or, or the reward in it is that We'll look back at those days and we'll say, you know what? I followed your instructions. I listened. You poured into me. And now I'm in places that I never thought I'd be. I never I never would be where I am today if it were not for the conversation that I had with Dion uh, back in 2018. And there are other people that have worked with me over the years that they will say the same thing, that because you pulled me to the side, because you, you, you pulled my coattail, as they would say back in Alabama, um, because you got me together. You know, I am now in a different place and I've experienced new opportunities and doors have opened for me. For some, this is an industry and it's a job that people do while they're in college or while they're just filling in employment gaps. But there are some of us who take this career very seriously and we want to go as far as we can and we want to be as impactful as we can. And the, the great part or the greater part of my impact is impacting those people that work around me and work with me uh, so that we can get them to where they need to be. Well, I tell you what, man, I've got to I've got to I got to give you kudos because you don't have any gray hair like what I have. <laughs> And you speaking, you speaking wisdom of guys that's been in the business for like 20, 30 years now. So yes, somebody, sir. I don't know if it's mom, dad, or somebody's been dropping some knowledge on you way before you got here. <laughs> uh, well, I should. My, I, I grew up in my grandmother's house. My grandmother was a safe haven. Laura Rice uh, was a safe haven. She died. Uh, she passed away September of 2021. Um, but. The one thing I learned from her is no matter how bad I saw people treat her, she never changed towards people. Uh, her home was always a safe haven. That was the house that the whole neighborhood came to. Uh, and, and I remember, you know, you know, and I grew up in a time where, you know, these parents now don't cook. But I grew up in a time where grandma would get up and make breakfast go to work and come home and cook dinner. And, you know, we didn't know what McDonald's and Wendy's and Popeye's was, you know, we had a hot meal on the stove. Uh, that's probably why I cook as well as I do today. But that's the type of life that I saw up uh, growing up. I often talk about my aunt Betty Chapman, uh, who uh, I think she passed away. God, 2022, uh, my grandmother's sister, my aunt Betty, regardless of who you took to her house, she was, number one, going to welcome you in and tell you to have a seat. Then she was going to ask if you wanted something to drink. And she had everything to drink that you could think of outside of liquor. Um, but then surprisingly, the craziest thing, and I tried to do this, I try to do this in life now because I thought it was so cool. She would produce a meal out of nowhere. She'd ask you, are you hungry? Have you ate? Have some cake. I've got some dress in here. And you're like, where did she get this from? And she's pulling together food. And so... That's where my love for hospitality started because I grew up in a home and around people that were hospitable, who would open their doors, who would feed you, who would take care of you. And it was instilled in us as, as young kids, take care of the people around you. 
take care of your guests, take care of your company. And because that was instilled in me, you know, that's been a key contributor to my success in the industry today. I keep that same principle, that same mindset as I go through life. I've had situations where, you know, especially being at the beach, where guests would come to Myrtle Beach knowing that that's their last trip and, and, and pass away, you know, while they're there. I go down and pray with the family, extend their reservation for free and go get flowers and bring dinner. And they're like, what is this? This is Southern hot. Ho- this is Southern, Southern hospitality hot- personified. Yeah. You know, yeah. we, 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 you know, we have all kinds of situations that happen in life. We have all types of things that happen to us, but more importantly, it happens for us. Uh, it's for us to become better. It's for us to grow. It's for us to learn. And so, you know, that's been, you know, that's my life. Okay, man, you, you're talking that real down home Southern hospitality. Right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> have some, have some sweet tea or something like that is about Absolutely. To <laughs> sweet, sweet tea that was brewed on the outside on the, in the sun. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, so man, Reese, it, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Tell me this, what advice would you give young people? You know, I don't even, I don't know if I'd say uh, folks looking for work, but what advice would you give maybe young high schoolers and college students that might be considering hospitality? I mean, for a career, what advice would you give them? I'll give you two, two, two points of advice. The first piece is applicable at the beginning, the middle and the end of your career. And it's simple. We've heard it a lot. You miss 100 percent of the shots that you don't take. Never be afraid to take a risk. Never be afraid to put yourself out there. But then the other piece of advice is nobody's going to market you like you market you. Invest in yourself. Learn the business. Don't just show up for a paycheck, but learn the business. Make necessary sacrifices. Those temporary sacrifices that you make set you up for long-term success. And they put you in a place to where you're able to really enjoy your life and enjoy the business that you work in. Go for the goal. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it. Don't let anybody tell you that you're not ready. Believe in yourself. I am where I am because I took a risk. I left Alabama, moved to South Carolina. When I left South Carolina, I joined the company I'm with on task force. That position took me to places I've never imagined that I'd be. I've been the broadest form where uh, Harriet Tubman was born and I've seen it with my own eyes. The energy and the spirit that you feel when you're standing out there in Cambridge, Maryland is surreal. Um, I, I've gone to the Statue of Liberty. I've been in New York City. You know, um, I've been to Whitney Houston's grave. I go crazy places. Uh, I was like not not far from Whitney Houston's grave and I said, I'm going to visit Whitney Houston's grave. Uh, coincidentally, when Jeffrey Dahmer's um, documentary or the, the the Netflix series came out a couple of years ago. I was in Milwaukee. I got to go and visit some of those places. It's eerie as that is. Um, but I am where I am because I was not afraid to take a risk. I was willing to go where I needed to go. Bloom where you're planted. And that means sometimes you may have to walk away from family and friends and what's familiar uh, on a quest to get to where you want to go. But you'll eventually end up at a place where you can either bring all of that to you or you can be free to go back to it. Uh, The main thing is to take the job seriously. Take it seriously. Understand that somebody is the it's more than a paycheck. Hospitality is a way of life. You got to love people and you got to take care of them. You've got to take care of your staff. You got to take care of your guests. You've got to take care of your owners and you've got to do it in the right spirit. You've got to develop uh, culture. You've got to develop character. And there has to be a passion for this. If you're not passionate about it, you're going to ruin everybody around you. You're going to damage everybody around you. But if you love people, you love to meet new people and go new places, this is the place to go. You just got to put in the work. And putting in the work, and I'll say this, and I'll probably get crucified for this, but putting in the work doesn't necessarily mean you know, going to school for 20 years and developing a lot of debt. Because you can go to school for the next 20 years and get every degree you can in hospitality. But without experience, it does you no good. Go ahead, be willing to get on the bottom ground and learn everything. Don't If you're at the front desk, ask to work in housekeeping and learn housekeeping. Ask to work in food and beverage. Ask to work with the maintenance team. 
learn every aspect and area of the business. It's only going to secure your spot in the future and give you a platform to grow on. Man, I, I, uh, I feel like we got the Reese Holman doctrine today and stuff talking with you, man. This has been, <laughs> <laughs> you got the, you got the 12 principles that Reese Holman to be successful in the hospitality <laughs> business. But man, yes, I, sir. I, I applaud you and I appreciate the time. I, I love the conversation. I love the, the nuggets of advice and experience that you share with us today. And, uh, you know, I hope that we'll we'll stay in touch and we'll find out more about Reese Holman and what's going on with them, man. Sounds, sounds like the star is bright. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Hey, this has been another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Please take a minute to check out the Recovered app today. And don't forget to get your 50% off protecting yourself and your family should disaster strike. And as always, please follow us on LinkedIn, subscribe to our YouTube channel, this episode with Reese will be on Apple Podcasts and Spotify shortly. Please check it out. And as always, we appreciate your thought, comments, and feedback. All right. This has been another Ted's Hospitality Minute. We'll see you guys next time. Have a great day, y'all. Ted's Hospitality Minute is sponsored by Recover It. Don't wait for disaster to happen to wish you had done this.